At the end of the lesson, you are going to identify the properties of Moore Penrose pseudo inverse, follow the process of identifying Moore Penrose pseudo inverse, and appreciate the significance of Moore Penrose pseudo inverse. In this session, we will learn about a very interesting topic that is deeply connected with our last topic, which is about the singular value decomposition. So if you haven't watched our lesson number 10, I suggest and I strongly suggest that you have to watch our lesson number 10 because it's very important when we talk about the pseudo inverse or the more Penrose pseudo inverse without understanding the singular value decomposition, it's very difficult for you to be able to understand and dissect the concept very, very properly. So you may pause this video for a while and then come back if we're done with the singular value decomposition and then you can understand properly this lesson. Okay, so before we dive deeper, let's first build the foundation of our basic understanding of this session or of this lesson. So the first thing is that matrix inversion only works if a matrix is a square matrix. So the, do you remember a square matrix? So it has the same number of columns as the rows. For example, we have here, it has two rows, it has two columns, so it has the same number. So if it's not square matrix, then we have to find ways how to find its inverse. So basically what we do here is we make a left inverse of B of a matrix A so that we can solve a linear equation A X equals Y. And how to solve a linear equation? To do this, we're going to left multiply each side. So later we will have that. Then the second one is that it concerns about the structure of the problem. So maybe you, you would like to ask me, what do we mean when we say structure of the problem? What does a structure mean? So it means that the mapping of A to B depends on the structure of the problem. So we have A to, so we've been talking about mapping to B. Okay, so the mapping of the point from A to B depends on the structure of the problem. So the structure here that we mean is we have to consider two situations. The first situation is that A is taller than it is wider. Let's have that. A is taller than it is wider. Taller than wider. So it means it has elements in column than in rows. So more columns, more, less rows. So in this case, there is a possibility that there is no solution for the equation. Our second situation is that A is wider than it is taller. So definitely this is the opposite of the first situation. So rows have more elements than the columns. So in this situation, there could be many solutions. So to make some advances in the cases that we've mentioned, we are going to use the more Penrose pseudo inverse. So to practically compute, we have to follow this formula. So this is our guiding formula. So we have the pseudo inverse of A is equal to V D or the inverse of D transpose u or u transpose. So we have here one, two, three elements that we have to study first before we move on. So what are these elements? What does each one of them mean? So u, okay, I'm going to send a different color, u, then we have d here and v. They are actually the SVD or the singular value decomposition of matrix A, okay? So if you want to know more about SVD again or singular value decompos decomposition, please, please, I suggest you go back to lesson number 10 for you to, for, for you to, 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 to follow the process, okay? So then D, 
what is the meaning of this d where the inverse d is the pseudo inverse of a diagonal matrix d which is computed by taking the reciprocal of the non-zero elements and then getting the transpose of the resulting matrix so for us to understand the equation we are going to have this example and we will have the process step by step or step by step so our case is that we are going to find the more penrose pseudo inverse of this matrix so let's name this matrix as matrix a okay so okay so we have four three zero negative five so to do this we are going to follow the different steps okay the first thing that we're going to get is that we are going to compute for the singular value decomposition so this is the stepping stone for more processes later i mean i mean for 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 more steps later so these are the svd svd of our matrix a okay so we don't have to go through the to the processes so we'll just have them so if, but if you would like to check if this one is correct you may do so so we have u this is the value of u this is the value of the diagonal and this is the value of v now what will be the next one so let's go to the second step our second step is that we are going to get the reciprocal of d okay so as what we have said this is obtained by taking the reciprocal of each non-zero values on the diagonal so what are the non-zero values in the diagonal so let's go back to d so we have these non-zero values in the main diagonal so we have 6.32456 3.162288 so we're going to get the recipro reciprocal and to get the reciprocals is very easy we only have to make a fraction wherein one is the numerator and then this one which used to be a whole number now becomes a, not really a whole number but uh, here it's it's the numerator now become the denominator and also with this one and then what we do here is that we're going to take the transpose okay so let's take the transpose okay I forgot there should be T here because it is the transpose so when we divide 1 by 6.3246 we get this one and when we divide 1 by 3.1623 we get this one and then taking the reciprocal now we get this okay but again it's because it's a square matrix when we get the reciprocal I mean the, the, the transpose I mean then we still arrive at the same thing okay so but of course if, if it would be a different case then it would be different okay now it's easier so as you could see when we take the reciprocal of its of its non-zero values on the diagonal this leaves all the non-zero I mean this leaves all the zeros as they are so as you could see nothing happens with the zero values because we don't do anything with them now I think we are ready for our third step which is the multiplication of the first two matrices in the equation so let's go back first to our equation so basically what we will do here is that we're going to multiply the V and then the D inverse so what is our V the V is here okay and then the D is this okay I hope you're following so multiply this and this and then we get this okay so 
of course you know that the basic thing that we have to do is, is that like this okay for those who have not studied how to do the multiplication okay and then you do for the next values okay so you could check if this one is correct okay you, you may do that at home and then please comment below if something is wrong okay I am open to correction actually right then I think we are ready for our fourth step so the fourth step is that we're going to multiply the result in the number three to the transpose of u now this is the result okay and then we will multiply that to the transpose of u so what is the transpose of u we will see that later how we did the transpose okay so now we have this this is the v and then in the d inverse so as you could see where is the okay this one and then we multiply that to the transpose of u so before as you could see negative point oh sorry negative eight point nine four four three then it becomes in this place they just flip okay what about this one is something happening now let's find out they leave as they are okay they are as is they don't flip only this one why they don't flip because they are in the diagonal okay that's the rule okay so when we multiply this and this then we get this one okay now maybe you would ask me what is the significance of this what is this one then okay this is actually what we call the more pseudo inverse so the more pseudo inverse of a which is used to be 4 3 0 negative 5 is now 0 0.25 0 0 0.15 and negative 0 0.2 what is this for why do we have to study this the important characteristic of this pseudo inverse is appreciated when we solve a simple linear system of equations ax equals b it has 0 or 1 or infinitely many solutions x equals pseudo inverse a times b is the closest solution when nothing exists this offers the single answer when one exists when many exists it is the smallest solution in the sense that norm 2 is the smallest it can also be used to find the weight of a weighted sum approximation which minimizes error in a least square sense after all being said and done let's try this why do we use more Penrose pseudo inverse define the process of doing more Penrose pseudo inverse you may do this using a problem and you may design your own matrix don't forget to write your answers in the comment below so we could discuss properly and everybody can learn as much as we can do not forget to subscribe like and share please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session see you in the next session